Good morning, folks. Today we've got geomagnetic storms, more weather alerts, news on radiation, Yellowstone, and Pluto, and we expand the pressure and radar forecasts around the globe. Earth-facing quiet effect continues to dominate, even as the sun has a day of increased activity across the sphere, including a small eruption from the incoming active region before it swings into the Earth-facing position. We also had far-side eruptive activity, including an apparent filament released directly on the opposite side of the sun and small heliospheric disruptions. Coming to spaceweathernews.com, we find a much calmer Earth-facing disk. Even that filament crossing center longitude settled back down yesterday and remains on our star. We do still have two things to note at the limb incoming. Behind the active region, you should see a dark plasma filament cresting over the limb now. And to the north of that, a clearer coronal area and darker surface cresting over into view heralds the return of the northern coronal holes. X-ray flux shows only the tiniest C-class flares, nothing significant, and the sunspots will need to develop to change that as they are small and needing the magnetic mixing as well. Our space weather focus yesterday was in the solar wind, the impact, density shockwave in orange bunched up ahead of the hot speedy particles you see in yellow and green, a short-lived level 2 geomagnetic storm popped up and while we could see reverberations, the main disruptions from the shockwave are waning now. We could have another stream in three days from this opening down south. It also presents a minor 48-hour earthquake watch uptick as its interplanetary magnetic fields begin to face Earth. Let's do a full disk analysis with Stonyhurst starting at zero longitude which faces Earth. Dark up north at negative 90 is that incoming coronal hole which blows out majorly as we get to the far side of the sun. Some bright active umbral magnetic fields departing at 90 and we're back around to the earth facing side. Big news from Tony Phillips as his cosmic ray radiation experiments have shown more than double the exposure at high latitudes versus low latitudes. We're still waiting to see if they had energetic and neutron detection capabilities or just one of them. NASA with an interesting article out about Pluto where they think water, ice, and sublimation events are carving out one area there. We also have an article extending the eruptive timeline of Yellowstone by millions of years, having began at Oregon and tracked eastward to Idaho. Interesting read. The flooding in the southern states continues. Record events at many locations spread across Louisiana, Texas, Arkansas, Missouri, Mississippi, southeast Oklahoma, and stretching up into Tennessee and Kentucky. But the West has been taking it hard as well. Powerful earth spot driving major rain, landslide, and wind events in California. As you can see as we come to Windy TY, neither event is over. West gets pounded again tonight, and the rain continues in the south as the earth spot continues to be stalled out for at least one more day. It is Saturday, so the weekly Fly on the Wall podcast will be coming to suspiciousobservers.org in just a few hours. Website members go to the homepage, click Premium, then Fly on the Wall. We've got highly relevant news stories this week, including reasons to once again reflect on the unfolding long-term global catastrophe. We've got pressure and radar forecasts and shots of our star to close. It's 4.15 a.m. here in the desert. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.